Thank you, ICD. As a creative artist, as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, I often have to face walls. Every dream begins with a wall, a separation. Separation between our concept, our idea, our dream, our project, and the potential audience, the recipients of our work, of our dream, of our concept. Overcoming these walls in these complex times requires a special kind of global effort, an effort that unites us all, artists, entrepreneurs, businessmen, engineers, politicians. Today, I'm here to speak about this effort specifically from the perspective of our creative minds. A wall without walls, that's the title of uh, this conference, is a dream for many. Physical walls, emotional walls, cultural walls, they all begin in our minds. Sometimes in the minds of children, for lack of a better education, sometimes in the minds of adults. Our hope to reach a world without walls rests on what we could call creative engagement. What does it mean? What do we mean by creative engagement? Before we go there, let's take a quick look at how we think as human beings in a very simplified way. Analytical thinking and creative thinking are two ways of processing information in our minds. They are two ways of engaging the world. Analytical thinking operates at high abstraction levels, simplifying, categorizing, classifying, labeling the world around us. It is strongly language dependent. It processes information mainly in a sequential way, easily accessible for adults, is very focused on efficiency, allows us to take quick decisions based mainly on past data, assumptions and conclusions. It is convergent. It narrows down possibilities to generate solutions. On the other hand, creative thinking is more specific. It works at lower abstraction levels. It is also more organic and visual. Capable of simultaneous processing requires more effort to activate in adults. And it is more focused on innovating and creating new mental patterns based on a mixture of new and stored data. It is divergent, expansive, a generator of ideas that can later be evaluated and refined by our analytical thinking processes. So now, both of these thinking strategies are equally important, and yet, which one of these is especially relevant when we face the high complexity of many of today's challenges, including the many walls of separation that surround us today? Let's look at a study by IBM, the American company, the global CEO study, a very sophisticated study on the most important parameters that are key for companies around the world to succeed when they face very complex challenges, like the challenges that we face with all of these walls of separation. This study in the, very, in the last two editions, 2010 and 2012, concluded that creativity and creative thinking is the most important parameter for these CEOs when facing the complexity of today's challenges. The study was done on more than 1,500 CEOs around the world from over 60 countries. This is the 2010 edition that uh, was focused on complexity, and we can see creativity as the most important parameter coming in the results. Also 2010 edition. Here we have the 2012 edition focused not on complexity, but on connectedness. <coughs> and again, creative <coughs> comes as, uh, in the top parameters. So. Why is creative thinking so important for CEOs around the world? The reason is that in a society and a world that is becoming more and more complex, analytical thinking, as important and essential as it is, can be too slow and abstract to deal with that complexity. Creative thinking, creative engagement, 
can help us find innovative solutions faster, can bring us closer to the complexity that we face, not just in art or business, also in politics, also when we need to understand why other cultures behave in different ways than us. A world without walls, therefore, requires creative engagement, requires going beyond high abstraction, which is also separation, to engage with the current fine details of what we are facing. Naturally, this requires more effort, more investment, but the benefits are substantial. And the question is, how do we manifest this creative engagement today? Above all, creative engagement means deep engagement with the recipients of our efforts, with the community that awaits our art, service, or decision. Creative engagement means doing our best to understand the life and challenges of that community as of this moment, their needs, their opportunities, their position in the world's ecosystem. And this new accumulated information coming from a community that is different to ours, challenges our existing mental patterns. Integrating all of that with our own views requires an openness and a willingness to look beyond the most immediate and easy to reach conclusions. It requires a staying away from what we often call premature closure. We don't want to converge too quickly. Premature closure in our artistic efforts, business deals, or important decisions is what often triggers walls of separation. When we fall too quickly on the cliffs of closure, those deep channels, previous mental patterns that have been carved over months, years, decades, old cliffs that keep us away from the new, current, fresh, perspectives. So the question is, how do we keep away from premature closure? How do we keep away from converging too quickly when we're facing high complexity and these walls of separation? And how do we visualize and exercise and activate this creative engagement? Staying away from the cliffs of closure means taking the chance of opening new routes. And that requires effort, being bold, taking calculated risks in our interaction with the challenge, being bold in our efforts to understand the other side of the equation. And I have created a metaphor to visualize this creative engagement. I call it the torch principle. What is the torch principle? We all live in an ocean of relative mental darkness because what we don't know is most times way larger than what we know in whatever context we happen to be in. Now, in this vast mental space, we all possess a torch to throw some light into the darkness. That torch, ladies and gentlemen, is our existing knowledge, our existing thinking patterns. And somewhere in this vast ocean of darkness, there are solutions, solutions to the challenges that confront us in our artistic projects, business ventures, or political negotiations. Some of these are innovative solutions located, therefore, far away from our current thinking patterns. Other solutions are more typical and predictable, and they are located closer to where we are. So the question is, how do we get, when we face high complexity, when we face these walls of separation, how do we get to the most original and innovative solutions? How do we find them if they are located far away from our current thinking patterns, from where we happen to be holding our little mental torch? Well, we could try to apply just and only our analytical thinking and logic to find these most innovative solutions. If we do so, we will be advancing slowly, systematically, sequentially, step by step, in this vast ocean of darkness, moving our small torch around, shaking slowly our mental patterns, 
trying to illuminate one of those innovative solutions. But unfortunately, time is limited. And moving in this way, we will end up most likely rather close to where we started. We may even move in circles and end up right where we started. Or we may end up settling for a rather typical and predictable solution. To many, this will sound familiar. Most of us can remember business, political, and other kinds of processes that ended up very close or right where they began. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, is, is there another way? How can creative engagement take us further, faster, in our quest to find innovative solutions to our challenges in art, media, business, politics, or anywhere else? Finding those faraway innovative solutions requires reinforcing our thinking with new strategies. It requires a way of thinking that allows us to take leaps, not just small steps. A way of thinking that allows us to position new torches, new lights, directly at a variety of faraway mental locations in this vast ocean of mental darkness in order to illuminate areas and concepts that are far from our position. And planting these new torches in mental positions that are far from our typical ones may seem risky. But maybe, just as the artist needs to move away temporarily from the painting in order to grasp the totality of its meaning, maybe in the same way, in order to find the certainty and security of a great innovative solution for our challenge, maybe we also need sometimes to detach ourselves from that security and certainty momentarily. Maybe we need to go beyond the safety and constraints of our conscious analytical thinking and mind and complement that part of us with the integrating and blending power of our creative thinking capabilities. Because, ladies and gentlemen, our minds are powerful integrators. They are capable of blending, connecting and interpreting whatever patterns and stimuli we give them, no matter how different and separated they seem to be. And these mental incubation processes continue until they make sense of these patterns, until they find a harmonious way of organizing them and relating them to each other. Therefore, we plant new torches, new lights in different areas of this ocean of mental darkness. And what are these? These new torches are information, data, related, and in some cases, apparently unrelated to our challenge, to the community that we're interacting with, or to the context that surrounds the challenge. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we trust that most incredible tool the universe has created, a tool designed to connect, to interpret, to blend, to make sense of anything we present to it, a tool designed to bring down the walls of separation and blur the distance between what apparently were opposites. That tool is our brain, our mind, capable of both analytical and creative thinking, a tool often underused when all the emphasis is put on only one of those, usually on that tip of the iceberg that represents the very useful, yet sometimes constraining and narrow world of logic and analysis. But let's make it clear, ladies and gentlemen, analytical thinking and logic are essential for our personal and professional lives. The problem is relying on only part of our potential. Both modes of thinking have different strengths, and we need them both. And in the case of dealing with high complexity scenarios, creative thinking can complement analysis in very unique ways. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when we go beyond the constraints of sequential analysis and complement it with creative strategies, when we distribute creatively our torches and lights, and when we give time to our minds to blend, shake, connect this distributed data, to make sense of it, to come up with a new interpretation, a new interpretation that 
integrates instead of separate, that adds instead of subtract. When we do all that, we may find out that the accumulated light generated by our patient incubation, giving time to all those light sources to blend, connect, and build up, that all of that has produced an illumination. It arrives suddenly. We feel clarity. And the wall of darkness that separated us from an innovative solution breaks down. Born from our patient research and studies, an illumination happens, a leap of thinking, a leap that has taken us far away to a new integrating solution for our artistic project, business venture, or political negotiation. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, be it in art, business, or politics, today, more than ever, we need to strive for balance between our analytical and our creative thinking. Because the world is too complex to approach it with a hand tied behind our back, to deal with it standing on only one leg. Yes, the world is too complex, and we need to face it with all we've got on top of our shoulders, an integrating, tolerant, open, and creative mind. This total mind will bring us closer and closer to a world without walls. In closing, separation between an artist and an audience, between a business professional and a market, between politicians, between countries. We can transform these separations, these walls, into opportunities. Opportunities to look at art business and the world from a more global perspective, exercising a more global mind, one that combines all our potential, analytical and creative thinking, abstraction and detail, sequential and simultaneous processing, and so on and so forth. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you today to consider that dealing with separation and all of these walls we want to eliminate is a challenge that begins in our minds. A challenge that invites us all to make the effort to go beyond high abstraction and exercise creative engagement with our audiences, markets, and the communities that surround us. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.